Hello, everyone. Welcome inside the Red Earth Production Studios for this edition of YBM Cast, powered by Game 7 Baseball, Game7Baseball.com. Remember, folks, we will be out at Warrington Athletic Complex this weekend for the Spring Showdown. We look forward to being out there all day Saturday. We're going to have our cameras out. We're going to do some interviews. We got some giveaways. We're going to have a lot of fun. Make sure you stop by the studio there. We'll have our portable studio out talking to folks. Uh, it's uh, our road show, and we're taking it on the road with Game 7 Baseball. Game7Baseball.com. If you're not registered, if you're looking for a tournament still, if you got there's some spots still out there available, go check it out. The new complex is great. Uh, the turf, it's a lot, you know, there you go. Everybody's looking for turf these days. Game7Baseball.com. Today on the show, we got him back. He's feeling better. The guru himself, Kevin Mulder. How are you, buddy? Doing doing much better than last week. So, uh, <laughs> still recovering, but uh, good enough. Good and, enough. And that's all that really matters, right? That's that's right. That's right. So, we're going to. Uh, I, it was tough yesterday. We did try and get out for our GAC game of the week last week, and. Uh, just didn't happen because the rain and all that kind of thing. It just was, it was, it was brutal. So, um, it was, we, we took the stuff down. It was, it was, it was a heck of a pitching matchup between Alex Young and, um, uh, Carter Cox. And even in the cold and all that, they both pitched pretty well. But, um, you know, the elements got uh, was getting to our equipment, and we just couldn't couldn't do that. So this area back here is basically production. Um, they do a lot of the artwork back here. They do the production. So any of that stuff that comes in off of, we'll say, our fanware stores, stuff that comes in off the team stores, a lot of the coaches wear, a lot of the last minute, hey, we got to have it in the next 10 minutes stuff. That all comes back here. This area is where all the day-to-day -day stuff that comes in really goes through. The retail store is its own little entity. This is where the real work is done. Uh, this week today, we want to start with, uh, you know, as we said, our, we didn't get the jail, but this Thursday, folks, make sure you check this out. We're, we're going to be out at O'Fallon Township High School. Uh, we have another showcase game this side on the Illinois, this time on the Illinois side. We're going to have Edwardsville visiting O'Fallon Township. Uh, Edwardsville won at their house yesterday. I talked with Coach Joe Bauer yes, uh, last night a little bit. Um, but this looks to be a pretty good matchup here. Well, yeah, those are those are two of the heavyweights on the Illinois side. And, um, you know, Edwardsville's defending state champion. Um, so that, that will be a fun matchup to take in. Absolutely. So we're going to be there 4.30 uh, game time. So we'll have our pregame starting at uh, 4.15. So make sure you check that out at uh, Youth Baseball Midwest on our YouTube channel. So uh, rankings, though, we're going to – I put out our rankings. Um, I, I always put out top 10 on the website. You can see our top 10. If you want more, if you want more information, please go to our website, subscribe to our uh, e-letter. We're putting out a report every Monday uh, with – top 20 in class six, five, and four. These all come from me. So they're suspect to begin with. I'm kidding. But um, I, I, this is my criteria, Kevin. I When I start looking at these, I look at, because I don't see all these teams, and I know you don't see all these teams when you guys are ranking, and that becomes the difficulty in it. But I start looking at head-to-head uh, -head matchups, who's played who, talent uh, level that's on these teams, depth, things of that nature, and you're looking at strength of schedule uh, when you start ranking, that's what I'm looking at. Does that sound about right? 
Yeah. Um, you know, it's obviously a little bit subjective and sure. we end up do seeing most of the teams throughout the course of the year, but obviously early in the season, uh, you can only watch, you know, a game or two a day. So it takes a while uh, to, to make your rounds, to get around to see everyone uh, that's maybe deserving of being ranked. But uh, certainly try to get it done. And that's on the PBR, uh, the prep baseball side. I'm to, and I was referring to me not being able to get to see because we just can't. I don't have that kind of – I know Kevin and, and um, those guys uh, that work with prep baseball, they – you guys got to get out there and see everybody, don't you, Kevin? We try. We attempt to. <laughs> there are a lot of schools. <laughs> there are a lot of schools and a lot of players, but that's our job. So we get out there and, um, you know, we cover, we cover what we can. So here's my top ten in Class 6, uh, Kevin. I got Staley at 6-2 and two at number one. Fort Zumwalt West at number two. At ten and two, Nixa coming in at number three, nine and four. Lee Summit West at ten and two, coming in uh, at number five. Francis Howell eight and two. Uh, number six, Liberty North ten and three. Number seven is Jackson six and two. Number eight, Eureka seven and one. Number nine, Blue Springs seven and three. And uh, coming in top in the top ten is Lindbergh uh, at nine and one. Uh, that's where they were as of when I did this on Sunday night. That's when I put these up. Uh, you want, the, as again, you want the full rank, you can subscribe to our e-letter and I put up a top 20. But that's my top 10 uh, coming out of uh, last week, Kevin. What do you think? Uh, I think I think that's great. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> Um, I put Staley at number one coming out of this because I was paying attention to what they did in Arizona. And they played pretty well there, and they lost to Hamilton, which is in Chandler, Arizona, 4-1. to one. Um, Hamilton is ranked by prep baseball nationally at number 37. I mean, you go out there and hang with some of those schools out there in Arizona, that's pretty good, don't you think? It definitely is, and they um... – you know, they are, um, you know, without question, one of the top teams in the state. And it will be fun uh, to see them compete in state. Uh, they are certainly battle tested because they've played some great competition and, uh, you know, have a really, really good group. So um, looking forward to seeing those guys later this spring. Absolutely. We are going to have. Uh, uh, another Missouri showcase. We'll have Staley visiting Liberty North. That is April 29th. That's Monday, April 29th. We're going to be live streaming that game. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, Mr. Urban's going to come and call that game with us. So that's going to be a lot of fun over there. Um, get to see, uh, uh, you know, and this is a little later in the season. So, uh, you know, it's going to be some, uh, money games there a little bit. Um, I put and, – and the other one, you know, I think Zumwalt West, they're out of the shoot. Uh, they win the Midwest Classic. Uh, they beat some quality teams. Um, Coach Goff has that team playing well, don't you think? They do. You, you're you jumping back on the bandwagon now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He hit me with that. I figured he was going yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see them doing this, Kevin. I didn't. They they uh they've been good this year. They've been great this year. They've uh it, you know, they they uh always it, you know, we talk about the program versus put, you know, and and it's year in year out. Um they uh they're finding a way to play really good baseball at the start of the season. They got a good uh group of talented kids. Um and they are off to a hot start, aren't they? Uh, yeah, Nick Alagna, where we kind of uh, um, were taught when we were talking about this in preseason, we were both thinking maybe second base, but he's playing third base. And that kid, you plug him in, and he defensively is just good. So, yeah, that and that's that's one thing that can separate, um, you know, high school team, especially any baseball team, but if you got good defense, you got a good chance. And um, 
West obviously plays really good defensive baseball, um, and and no doubt that's one of the keys to their success. Absolutely, because they're not just a juggernaut offensively or anything like that. And you know, Coach Goff year in year out hangs his hat on that defense pitching. Um, and you know, you you have to beat West. You just have to. You can't. They're not going to give you games. Yeah, very rarely are they going to hand hand you over something. You got to go get it. You got to take it. And uh, quite honestly, most high school teams at some point will break down and get and give you stuff. And uh, Zuma West does a very good job of limiting that, yeah. and they make you go beat them, which is which is very hard to do. Uh, one of the teams I did I have seen this year, and why I think I, why I put them at number three is uh, Nixa. Um, they went out to California, went zero and three, played some really good teams. <laughs> there. Come back, uh, lost to a good Glendale team by I think one run. I think it was a two one ball game, and then they've won. What is it now? Jeez, I don't know, six in a row. Um, cause they were, well, they were 0 and 4 and they've won nine. Actually, they've won nine in a row. So I don't do math. Just had a well. strong win versus our number one small school, Logan Rogersville. Um, which is, you know, they're not like most small schools. So that, that's a, that's a really quality win. Yeah. Nix has got a super talented group and is, uh, you know, starting to roll a little bit now that they're back, uh, in state. You know, a lot of these people don't know about these kids. Uh, I got to see it, and Char um, not Charlie, but uh, Caden Cloud. I got to see him in person. Uh, that kid's the real deal, Kevin. Very good athlete, um, good competitor, can do a lot of things on the baseball field, uh, good defender, uh, and a dynamic player offensively. Can swing the bat, and once he swings the bat, he can run those bases, fat plus plus runner. Uh, so total package there and, um, you know, kind of leads the charge along with Wyatt Vincent there for, uh, Nixa. Yeah. Wyatt Vincent hit a home run in that game. We, we did, we did live, uh, down there, uh, back to back home runs with, uh, I forget the, I know I knew it. I was going to forget his name. There's too many names running around in there, but, uh, is it Ryland Michelle? That is correct. Uh, yeah, one of their big time bats heading to Crowder. Um, yeah, they they uh, they have a deep group, and it, and Cloud had already hit uh, one double. Um, they were and he hit two doubles in that game. He made a defensive play that I still it's one of the it's one of my top uh, probably three so far I've seen this year. He goes to glove side, sliding to his knees. Pops up on one knee with his foot and throws the runner out. I was like, oh, my gosh, did I just see that? You talk about the athleticism <laughs> and then the arm strength to make that throw from your knee. Uh, that It's just impressive watching this young man. So I think Nick's uh, is going to be trouble for anybody. I think they got a good chance to get back to that final four, Kevin. The next on this list is uh, I've got is Lee Summit West. Um, I have not got the opportunity to uh, see them yet. Um, probably may not uh, this year, but uh, ten and two, uh, they're still playing good baseball. Uh, Drew Dickerson, um, the third baseman. Um, oh, geez, see, it's the gray hair, man. Who's the <laughs> Aiken? Is it? Jackson Aiken, yes. Yes. Uh, those two, they're, they're playing good baseball. Uh, yeah, no, Lee Summit's one of the top teams um, in the state, let alone the Kansas City area, uh, and, and they have stacked up um, a decent amount of wins in this young season. And, folks, I want to I want to say this, too. I don't look – when I do this on Sunday night, I don't look at anybody else's ranks. I, I don't because I don't want – this is my thoughts. I want these opinions or mine and mine alone. Now, when I look back over here, I've got prep baseball reports, um, large school rankings up. Now, remember, they do class five and six together. 
But he's but Kevin, you got Lee Summit at number four there, uh, behind Howell, Staley, and uh, West. Uh, Zumwalt West, that is. So you yes. you, th you think highly of this team, don't you? Absolutely. Um, yeah, they, I mean they're they're ten and two right now. Um, yeah, they've lost to Liberty North. They've lost to Nixa. So their losses are what I would call quality losses. Uh, and they have some they have some very good wins too. They beat Lafayette. They beat Platte County. They beat Liberty North. Uh, twice they beat Re republic and they've beaten glendale so they've gotten some strong wins um uh, under their belt um and you, you love it when they play a good schedule and this week they got blue Springs south for three games so another challenging series and one to keep an eye on uh this coming week uh next in there and you've still got towel at number one i dropped them to number five after uh seeing them a little bit in the midwest classic not Horrible. They're still a, uh, you know, a really good top five baseball team, but they did lose to Timberland last night, um, and I, which I thought was interesting. I Timberland is a good team. I do. I think, you know, they're, but they've got solid, solid players. Uh, you know, they got some decent pitching, uh, but I was a little surprised by that uh, loss there uh, to Timberland, Kevin. Yeah, they uh, faced Richie Swain, the right-hander, going to Mississippi State last night, um, and and actually did okay versus him. Uh, they uh, gave up a sixth spot, I believe, in the fifth or the sixth inning uh, that did them in. Uh, you know, they how similar stuff happened last year. They're always going to play a great schedule, and and they really challenged their team. Um, you know, they have losses this year to Zumwalt West, Rockwood Summit, and, and then Timberland last night. Uh, but when I look at the talent as a whole, um, it, it stands out. And I, I think they will have things righted. Now, whether they maybe deserve to be number one or not, that's certainly up to, for debate um, at, at this point in the season. But uh, I do really like this group. They have a lot of pitching depth. Uh, they have a lot of depth in the lineup uh, and some guys that are, you know, uh, I would put in the special talent class, you know, um, yeah. game changers, if you will. And, and they got some guys that can do that. Um, you know, and, and similar, similarly, last year, uh, Zumwalt West beat them, uh, was it four times in the regular season? And then the district championship, Hal came out and then ended up making the state finals. So, right. We've seen this before, um, and that gives me some pause. I always kind of go with a slow reaction uh, at the beginning of the season to the rankings and, and let some of the season play out before we start right. shifting teams too much. Uh, but certainly you have to notice, um, you know, like the start Zoom Alt West, and we certainly have, uh, you know, has had. Uh, and some teams get off to a, a slower start, like uh, – you know, Viani has gotten off to a little bit of a sore start. Now, I, there's a legitimate reason for that, mm -hmm. which we can get into later. Um, with their basketball run, they missed a couple of their top pitchers. So it, it's pretty explainable. And I think that they will be a different team come May that they are at the end of March. So, um, you know, and, and that's stuff you have to factor in to do these rankings. And then you get a team like Lindbergh, who's, you know, maybe – people didn't necessarily expect their great start and, and they've come out and been gangbusters to start the season. Uh, and, and you got to reward, reward that, uh, cause it is about on field play at the end of the day. Absolutely. I don't think Viani's hit yet either. Kevin. They, they haven't, uh, hit to their standards. I would, I would, I would think they would say that. Um, but they've also faced some really good arms. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's kind of the price you pay uh, for being Vianney sometimes. <laughs> you, you, you know, you're not going to sneak up on anyone. This is a known uh, group, and they have, uh, you know, an Oklahoma commit, a Mizzou commit, a Cincinnati commit. Uh, like, they, they have guys 
that people know about. And so when you see a lineup like that, they're going to throw um, their their top arms. So they, they've faced a couple really quality arms uh, from Oakville, from Limburg, um, you know, so they're from Zuma West. So they're, they're getting dealt uh, off the top of the deck, um, you know, pretty much every single game. So, which I'm sure they wouldn't have it any other way. Absolutely. And I think that goes back to, you know, as you said, it's a slow start for them. How, you know, I know Coach Perkins likes to put kids in, in difficult situations early in the season. I think, it, you know, we've seen that time and time again where to see what he's got, you know, to give them experience because I think it pays off for them later in the season. So with Hal, yeah, I dropped him down, but, uh, you know, it's still top five. I think any of those top five teams, you know, uh, number one, it's, you know, it's all 1A, B, C, D, E, in my estimation. Uh, you just, you know, you saw some loss, Summit, you know, a few losses here and there. You look at that. Everybody's losing to better teams, or not better, but good quality teams. I think there's quality losses across the board with that top five. Even into number six, Liberty North, they're ten and three. I mean, uh, they are. They just picked up where they left off last year as well, Kevin. Yeah, uh, you know, still plenty uh, in the cupboard there, and uh, you got a championship pedigree there. Uh, they too have played a really good schedule. Um, you know, so another school that's going to always challenge themselves and, uh, you know, they, they take a couple L's along the way, but 10 and three record, um, you know, their losses are all, you know, what I would call quality losses. They've lost a Lee summit West twice. Uh, they beat them once as well. Uh, and then they lost to Nixa one to nothing. So, you know, they're, they're, they're playing good baseball. They also have some great wins, and they've beaten Glendale and Kickapoo and Lafayette and, you know, mentioned Lee Summit West and Rockhurst. And, you know, so they're they're right where I thought I think they'd be. And, um, you know, they're, they're off to a – which is a really good spot, mm -hmm. truthfully. The, the two teams next, I mean, Jackson and Eureka, they've played some good teams. They've uh, – but – I don't know if they've had as much as far as quality schedule. Correct me if you think I'm wrong, but uh, they've had some they've had some good win, uh, good quality wins against good teams. But and that's why I kind of think they're there. I'm still looking to see how Jackson uh, does, and it's tough with Jackson. They're down in the middle part of the state. They got to drive a long way to play really good teams anyway. Not to you know not to belittle no. the schools around. They do they do a great job with their schedule because they they have to travel to go find you know the bigger school competition mm -hmm. that they uh you know that they compete at, at the end of the season basically and you know uh when they're in their conference or district play they're they're playing uh, teams that are closer to them a lot of those teams aren't as strong some are um yeah. Uh, but they they do a great job. They you know, they get up and play in the Troy tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll travel over to Springfield to play some of those teams. You know they they've played House Central and and Zumwalt West and CBC. They got Viani coming up. They've played Oakville. Um, you know so they they do challenge themselves. But you are going to see a smattering of games mixed in. Uh, which is just part of their league schedule that you certainly can't hold that them uh, hold that against them in, in my estimation. And yesterday uh, on the schedule, they beat Oakville one nothing. And I'm sure I, I didn't look. Uh, I didn't look to see who uh, who who pitched, but the the big arm from Oakville. What's the young man's name? I would imagine it was him. That uh, that was Viani that beat Oakville. Oh. That was Viani. That's right. I'm sorry. I messed up. That's correct. So that's a good win for Viani right there, too. I'm sure facing that that young man, right? Yes. So my fault. <laughs> I was looking at uh, the wrong scores. So, but Jackson, I think, is is still. I think they're going to be right there. Uh, they've got some talent. I think is, 
if their confidence continues to grow, they've got guys, they've got people that can pitch. They're they're hitting well. They're playing well, and they have, as you said, played. But I think they're just a little bit below that. Eureka, what do you think of Eureka? I like the Eureka team a lot. Um, really deep uh, positional group. Um, they got some really good young arms. Um, and they've played a pretty solid schedule um, to date. You know, they've, they've played DeSmed and Parkway South, um, you know, Oakville. And they dropped one to CBC earlier in the year. They beat Sackman, who we've talked about uh, previously, um, that we like that Sackman team. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, uh, you know, the Eureka team's going to be one uh, – that will be fun to follow come postseason time. Um, you know, they, they got Brady Piccarelli kind of leading the charge offensively. Um, they got some infield depth. Craig Ring is a sophomore that I really like. Um, uh, they got the catcher, Dominic Anselmo, behind the plate, so they're good there. We've talked about it. Um, their young arms – are, in, in my opinion, going to tell the story how far they're going to go. Kyle Rigg, um, mm-hmm. you know, shortstop there. Uh, so there's just a lot of dip. Brody Hunt. They, they got a lot of good infield depth. And uh, we mentioned this with Zoom Out West. You start with a good defense. Uh, you show me good high school defense, I'm going to show you a good high school baseball team. And, and they have good high school de- – they got good infield defense, a good – good outfield and catching defense to go with it. So, so, and, and I love what you said there because you're going to have to watch to see if those young arms mature enough <laughs> this season to get, you know, to make that run to the final four. Correct. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can hit your way through some games, but at some point you're going to have to line up and win a game three to two, one to nothing, two to one, something along two nothing, something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll run into that situation. So you got to be able to to match that. There you go. That's where we're at. Uh, class six, class five. Um, I mean, uh, at the top, these two teams to me are clearly – you know, we talk about quality wins and quality losses. Willard, of course, hasn't lost yet. <laughs> um, that team's going to be just hard to beat. Uh, Coach McGee has that team rolling. Uh, we saw them down um, uh, in the first week against Camdenton. Of course, Camdenton depleted by injuries. But it's still Camden, uh, Willard just kind of rolled through that like uh, a good team knows they will. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate for Camdenton, but Willard took care of business. And uh, that's what you should expect from a team that, you know, I know it's high school and we're not supposed to talk a little bit, but, you know, that's what you do. Uh, they run rule Camdenton, but Camdenton had a freshman on the mound because they're so depleted and he didn't pitch bad. It just came, uh, Willard's just that much better. It's just the way it is. And Willard is very good, Kevin. Yeah, we we talked about that before the season. This is this is a really strong ball club, um, and they're off to a hot start. I'm looking forward to seeing them next week in the Columbia tournament, um, uh, one of my favorite tournaments of the year. Um, you know, we get teams from Kansas City and St. Louis and Springfield in the middle part of the state. Uh, really good competition and. Um, We'll line them up and kind of see where everyone fits in. That's a, that's a great indicator in the middle of the season, kind of right there to see who's kind of separating themselves. Correct. Yeah, and that tournament's so deep. Uh, there, there's definitely been teams that have gone, you know, one and four in that tournament, and then turned around and made the final four of uh, the state tournament. So this is an unforgiving uh, tournament, and uh, you know it, whether you win it. Or really struggle, it, you know, it, you're still could be a very, very good team. Um, it, but it does give you a good indication of kind of where you sit at the moment. Um, and it is fun to, 
to match up teams from across the state. Uh, so it's a, it, it is one of my favorite tournaments of the year. Now, uh, my number two team here is kind of uh, maybe an outlier uh, for this. I, I know we got – and Zumwalt South and Webb City are right at the top here with the uh, – right underneath this team. I think South and Webb City are really good. But um, the one that stand out I've been watching, Kevin, is Carney. Uh, they're nine and three, and all their their losses are against class six schools. And three those three losses, they lost to Grain Valley at the I think it was yesterday or the I think it was yesterday or the day before. Class six school, they got a winning record. Grain Valley's a good program, but they've lost to Liberty North uh, or Blue Springs. Hang on, I've got it up here. Might as well just not mess myself up here. They've lost to Blue Springs, Lee Summit West. They lost to Lee Summit West seven to six. <coughs> um, they lost to Nixa. Nixa beat them up pretty good, eight nothing. And that's their losses. The rest, they beat Webb City. Carney beat Webb City nine nothing. So Carney is. I think kind of something, you know, we're going to have to look and see. And that's why I have them at number two in the class five. Um, they are definitely not backing away from, from talent because after they played Grain Valley, they lost. It was a close ball game. They got Liberty North again. Then they played Jeff City, Timberland, Grandview, Park Hill South. They played Bruce Springs again, Park Hill South, Excelsior Springs, the end of it kind of gets into their uh, conference and district play. But up to that point, they're playing top 10 class six schools, Kevin. Yeah, I love to see that. And, uh, you know, they're, they're obviously off to a great start and winning some ball games. And that will serve them well um, when they're playing in their class and, um, in district play. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't know. I'm, I'm working on getting a little more information about this squad because uh, I don't know that much about them. Uh, but because they're on the left side of the state. And uh, but, man, I, I it'll be interesting to see. And in their district, uh, when you look at their district, they're in District 8. You know, other than Platte County, maybe Smithville uh, and, and Platte County's having a kind of a down year. So, um, I mean, there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of competition I see in that district for Carney at this point. Of course, anybody can win at any time. We all understand that, but they have one of the clearest, uh, movements towards, you know, uh, a final forward that I've seen looking through these things, Kevin. Then, uh, um. go ahead. No, uh, yeah, yeah, you're you're right, and they've challenged themselves and played some good competition. So fun to follow. Uh, last night we got a glimpse at Fort Zumwalt South. Uh, they are that good. Carter Cox in the cold weather was pumping that fastball. He everybody was having to, he and you know what's funny is I saw it early on. He couldn't get his curveball. I mean, you know when it's cold in your hands, you can't hardly feel the baseball. It's hard to throw a curveball, isn't it, Kevin? Uh, yes. <laughs> it's hard to throw. When you can't feel your fingers, it's hard to throw a baseball. <laughs> but uh, he right. got it together. He threw that curveball pretty well as he started to go. Uh, they beat Liberty, uh, Alex Young, 5-1. to one. It was a close ball game. But, um, you know, Carter Cox, Connor Hankey, that, that one too right there. Uh, for Zumwalt South and then their offense, they they just put a lot of uh, pressure on you uh, defensively. Uh, Coach Friedel's got that team rolling. Um, they're good. Yeah, this is a strong group, and they got a lot of pitching depth. Um, I like their athleticism uh, from the positional group. Um, so fun. Fun team to, to watch. They're obviously battle-tested. Um, they've been to uh, Springfield two of the last three years, I believe. Um, you know, so they're looking to get back this year, and uh, they got the pieces to do it, certainly. And up to this point, uh, I was talking to Coach Friedel before the game. 
Connor Mendel hadn't even been behind the plate yet. That last night was his first game by, uh, back behind the plate. So uh, that defensively changes the game, in my opinion, when you get him back behind the plate. Uh, definitely. Strong arm catcher heading to Northern Illinois. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a big piece for that group. Absolutely. Um, Web City, of course, they're off to another hot start. Uh, I like what they're doing. I think they're a very good team. Um, Summit, <coughs> Rockwood Summit right behind them. Then I've got St. Francis Borgia, Fort Zumwalt East, uh, West Plains, um, Festus, uh, and Parkway Central. Um, the Borgia team is very interesting to me. Uh, they've had some good wins. The same thing, Summit, you know, they beat Howell in the uh, Midwest Classic. They lost the last two. They didn't quit. But, you know, you lost to uh, what? Uh, uh, I think it was CBC and um, I can't remember else who it was that they lost to. They had a couple of, you know, that was their only two losses so far the season. It was against big-time teams. Uh, so I think Summit's going to be right there in Class 5. West Plains. Let's talk a little bit about West Plains because it's something. It's a team that nobody really knows. West Plains, it's kind of over there in the middle of nowhere, but they're undefeated and they've got talent, don't they, Kevin? Yeah, the Scissors, um, Tank Sims, um, left-handed hitting catcher, um, kind of leads their charge, and that's the very, very southwest uh, portion of the state. Um, but they, they've had some good groups, and uh, this year uh, maybe their strongest yet. I it'll be I'm, and that's the other one. You know, when we start talking about like Carney and West Plain, you know, for me, just in general, I know what you guys do and whatnot. But finding information about some of these guys, some of these teams, is very difficult. And uh, hopefully, in the future, we start talking about it more and more. We can get more information about some of these teams. Uh, as it moves forward, uh, we're fortunate here in the St. Louis area uh, to have so much information because the the post dispatch, the coach, they have that place where coaches can put information in, and and the coaches are really good about doing it. And then you have the Misha website where you can find scores and stuff. So, you know, I haven't seen anything like what uh, the post dispatch does in any other part of the the state. So I think we're fortunate in that respect, don't you? I do. Post Dispatch does a good job, and most the high, of the high school coaches do a phenomenal job with that, and really benefits the kids um, and uh, the fans, um, you know, of high school baseball. So it's uh, you know it's a great service that they do, and um, you know we're fortunate to have that in the St. Louis area. Absolutely. Uh, Kevin, what's your thoughts on uh, Class 5 overall? I know we talked about those big ones. Uh, you know, where do you see some of the teams uh, underneath some of those Class 5 schools or come some of those top two, uh, top five schools we talked about? Um, yeah, uh, you know, Will, Willard and, you know, Webb City. I, I've been impressed with Rockwood Summit this year. Um, I, I think they've had a great start to their season. Um, that's a team I'm excited about getting out to see. Uh, we've talked about Zumwalt South. Uh, I really like their pitching depth. Uh, Borgia is super dangerous with, with uh, Jack Noby and Caden Carroll as a one-two combo there. Um, so they're off to a hop start. Festus, um, you know, defending state champion and a uh, lot of talent there. Mason Shermer back. Uh, you know, Zumwalt East is winning some games. Um, they're, they're off to a solid start. We've talked about, uh, that group plenty. Um, we like them. Um, you know, so uh, that, that's, there's certainly a lot of talent at, at that 5A level this year. Absolutely. Um, when we, uh, there was one team here when I was looking at this, Kevin, um, that stood out to me in, uh, in District 7, again, I'm trying to find some of these teams where you don't really kind of, we don't hear about a lot, but Carl Junction 
down in District 7. Um, they're off to, I think it was a 9-3 and three start. <coughs> I've never, you know, I don't know what kind of tradition or power or whatnot, but 9-3 is a pretty good record, right? 9-3 uh, is a great record, and yeah. Um... They're in that same district with Webb City. And uh, the other one is Belton. They've got they've got some arms. They're right, sitting right around 500. They're up in that Kansas City area. And uh, so Belton is another school. They got a couple of arms. If you get them into a playoff situation in a one-game scenario, could beat you, right? Uh, a- absolutely. Um, yes. Um, and I know I'm trying to – I was looking to see if I could find – I should have looked this up before, but because uh, Andy had brought up this pitcher that's at Belton before. Cooper Shrum. So they had the top sophomore in the state, uh, right-hand pitcher committed to Tennessee. So yes. yeah, they have uh, they have a special talent. Uh, you don't you don't want to run into Belton when they when he's on the mound certainly. One district game, you know, and Web City, you know, and at a Web City. So that's what you've run into sometimes in these situations, correct? Yeah, and Union's off to a really good start as well. They're yes. seven and one. Um, they they appear to be able to really pitch it uh, this year. Uh, I have not been able to see them yet this year, but their one loss is to to Borgia in a one run game. Um, you know, so they they took it to Washington the other day. Um, they beat Rolla, they beat Sullivan. So they, they, uh, they're going to be one to keep an eye on moving forward. And they're in that district five with, uh, Elias Catholic, Jeff city and Borgia. So union right, uh, right in that mix. I, I think that's good. That district five is going to be one to watch. It's going to be a tough district. Capital city in that district is not playing bad. They're playing pretty good. I think they got an above, uh, uh, they're above 500 record. Washington's struggling this year. Rolla is right. But so that district, I think District 5 is really one to watch with these teams playing as well as they are uh, early on in the season. Um, Pacific, you know, down in the south the same way, Kevin. Uh, They're off to a pretty good start. They're a team that kind of competes every year. They're right there. Uh, Don't get a lot of pub, right? I'm sorry, did you say Pacific? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's a strong team. Again, they're not sneaking up on anybody. Um, we, I was just looking at some of the numbers that Jake Collier's put out so far this year. One of the uh, top strikeout strikeout guys in the area. They're off to a five and two start. Um, they have um, some dynamic pitching with uh, Jake Collier. Um, kind of leading the charge there. Um, Cooper Burrington has done a good job for them as well. Um, and Drew Beffa. So, um, they, they got some, some arm talent there. And, um, yeah, that, that's, uh, on my list to go, to get out and see here sooner rather than later. I think class five is shaping up pretty good, Kevin. I really do. I think it's there's some really good districts. I think North Point, uh, they're they're having so they're they're getting to that point. Jack Cowling is pitching well, um, leading that team, and I think North Point can be maybe uh, a factor in that district four as it moves forward because you got St. Dominic there, St. Charles, you know, uh, St. Charles is playing well this year after a uh, as far as the GAC is concerned. So I think District 4 and this East, South, uh, North Point, uh, St. Dominic, Warrington. Uh, Warrington was 7-1 and one and, uh, you know, off to a big start. And so there's so many teams in this Class 5. I think it's very competitive across the board. Uh, Farmington down in District 1, I see uh, they got off to a good start. I believe they're nine, they were 9-2. Uh, in that district with Festus, DeSoto had a big win. Um, Hillsboro's not, they got a winning record. Um, Windsor, Imperial, off to a winning record. Uh, you know, and you look at quality wins and things like this, 
but people are playing winning baseball in these districts, and I think it just makes it very uh, it makes it fun for us when we start seeing these teams and competing. So <laughs> Festus, Festus doesn't just have a walk to the Final Four there, right? No, 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 not at all. Um, so yeah, there' a lot of competition um, at, at the five A level. Certainly, you just high, we just highlighted a, a good amount of it. Yeah. John Burroughs got kicked up and into class five this year. And that's a tough one for them. Uh, they're, they're playing decent, uh, but that, you know, that, that, that jump from class four, it can take something out of you that can it. Certainly. Yeah. Anytime you go up in class, it's, uh, it's going to present a challenge. Um, you know, and, and teams change year to year. So someone that maybe could have, Played up in class the year before. Um, by the time they get bumped up, they're they're not as well equipped to, to play up in class, uh, which can can be a, a problem. Uh, and I'm not suggesting that that's the case with John Burroughs. I'm just making a general statement. Absolutely. I'm going to roll off my class four top ten, and we're going to finish out with this, and then we're going to throw some games to watch at you here. Um. Class four, Kevin, I got Logan Rogerville, of course. I mean, uh, I got number two, Blair Oaks, Southern Boone, number three, Father Tolton, number four, number five, Fulton, number six, Summit Christian. They're on the left side over there. Uh, number seven is Benton at nine and one. Number eight, Central, Park Hills, five and three. Uh, number nine, St. Charles West. And coming in at number 10, a uh, team I, I I met this kid that played there, so I've I've started watching Josh Hagel, uh, their shortstop, Nop Noster, off to a big start, uh, seven and one up there, kind of in the middle of the state, uh, north middle of the state. Uh, that's my top ten. Uh, so, what are your thoughts uh, concerning Class Four? Yeah, Nob Noster, located directly between Columbia and Warrensburg off of Highway 70, Brian. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> right That's over there by it. White <laughs> Right over there by Whiteman's Air Force Base, um, where a lot of the uh uh stealth bombers are housed for the United States. We don't call him the guru for no reason, folks. Oh man. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, you know, the usual spe uh, suspects with Tolton, Fulton's back there. Have you, do you know much about Summit Christian, Kevin? I do not know a ton. Uh, that is a program that has consistently won games, though. So they, uh, they clearly are doing something correct over there. Yeah, I've kind of seen them on my radar a little bit. So I think Central, Park Hills, another team I don't know that much about. But I'm watching these records. I'm watching them win ball games. Um, it, it's And good quality ball games. So, you know, it it, uh, it stands to reason they're one of the – and Class 4 gets a little more difficult for the simple fact you got, what is it, uh, 16 districts. And, uh, you know, teams are spread out a little bit more. So you have a lot more teams. So it's, it's, it's tough to see all these schools, definitely, correct? Yeah, it, it does. Um, it, it does get tough to see, you know, every school at every level. Um, but you, you, you try to, to make the most of it and, and get to as many as you can, obviously. Um, it does help when they play up in class, which a lot of these guys do uh, at various points. So the, there's a couple here because we're looking at this, uh, the small school rankings. You've got the top ten. Of course, Rogersville, Tolton, uh, Blair Oaks, Southern Boone, Valley Catholic is another one. They're 9-0. and Valley Catholic. Uh, I think they're a class three, though, school, correct, Kevin? Yes. And then it, these two, and, and then Duchesne, another class three school, Duchesne. correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I believe so. Um, and I just, I actually just saw Duchesne play on Monday. Um, 
split a double header. Um, they, they have um, a couple really nice players. Jamison Forrest is a sophomore um, that uh, I like a lot. Uh, left-handed physical bat um, with a, a good amount of power. Um, and then um, – uh, they they had a a really nice one. They they've um, they're off to a good start this year, um, winning some games. And then Jackson Nikodime, uh shortstop. So they got a dynamic middle of the lineup there at at Duchenne High School. Uh, I want to finish with this one because uh, they don't get. It's just the kind of the nature of it. They're not part of Misha, but. Um, the St. Louis Patriots, the homeschool team, uh, they go anywhere, they play anybody, and uh, they're just a competitive ball club. Yeah, we've highlighted that. I've seen the Patriots uh, over the years, um, and they're off to a solid start this year. I think they're about 9-5. and five. Uh, They've made a run at the Homeschool World Series, uh, which is a, you know, a cool thing that they do. Uh, but they do go out and play a great schedule. Um, and, uh, you know, are very competitive, uh, team traditionally. Um, they have a, uh, a sophomore, um, Will Shark, who is Jack Sharks, if you remember him, mm-hmm. uh, who's over at, uh, Central Missouri now doing good things. Uh, Will Shark is, is doing good. And I apologize. He's a junior actually. Um, Will Shark, um, but he's... It's kind of leading the charge there for them, uh, hitting for a high average with a bunch of doubles. Um, so very good group. Uh, Logan Stewart, um, also uh, one of the frontline players over there, uh, hitting over 400 for the Patriots. So they definitely have, um, you know, a good amount of talent. Where do you think, you know, I mean, I think it's hard to do this classification wise, you know, because you don't know, you know, they're poor <laughs> homes, homeschool kids, but, you know, I, that, that's I the thing. I count them in the small school rankings personally. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what's fair and what's not when it yeah. comes to, to them. I don't, you know, I don't know their, <laughs> <laughs> it's what tough. qualifies as their enrollment and whatnot. What I do know is they go out and play a good schedule that they got good players. Um, and, um, uh, you know, a, a lot of talent on the team and definitely want to include them in the mix, whether or whether or not they're competing for a Misha, uh, state championship, I don't think is really relevant, uh, when it comes to our conversation about St. Louis and Missouri high school area baseball, I think they should be included in the discussion and yeah, they are in their own little category though. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I wanted to finish off with today. And because uh, I, I, I want to keep that team in this because, like you said, Kevin, they go and play. They're not afraid to play anybody. That's a fact. So I, you got a lot of respect. I have a lot of respect for those guys. I've umpired a few games back in the day for the Patriots, too. So there you go. Um, folks, uh, again, these are the uh, rankings of youth baseball Midwest. Not to be, uh, you know construed as anything else other than what comes from my brain and that's why i like to talk about this with kevin (coughs) kind of see where they're at and uh, get out and see some of these ball clubs there's a lot of good baseball happening around this state and uh we appreciate you tuning in kevin as always man appreciate the time brother you got it folks thanks for tuning in have a great day in the lord remember subscribe hit the dinger next to it because that's what we do we hit dingers uh, at least Kevin and, and uh, Stuart do here. That's what, he's got his helmet on. Did you see that, Kevin? That's my minions, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Got to have some fun, right? But, hey, That's folks, right. we'll see you out at the ballpark. All you pitchers, Kevin, give them some advice. Keep throwing strikes. Hitters, hit them where they ain't. We'll see you all next time.